van builds. Everybody's interested in them, I guess because we want to see what everybody else is doing to know what our options are, how many ways you can do it, because let's face it, if you're going to move into a house, you got a pretty good idea what your options are, but if you're thinking about moving into a van or buying a different van, you're going from a minivan to a full size or vice versa, you know, you might be thinking, what are my options for how I set that up? How do I deal with a bed? How do I deal with cooking? How do I deal with going in the bathroom? How do I deal with, uh, you know, storing things? All these <clears throat> questions. So I think it's natural to be interested in seeing van builds to see how people do it. And I've been doing this for full time for uh, better than a year and a half now. Um, I've been doing this part time off and on my whole life. Um, sometimes in a car. I did it for a number of months in a 1974 VW bus back uh, the turn of the, oh, 19, 2000, I guess. Um, back when we didn't have these kind of information resources available, you know, websites, blogs, YouTube videos. We just didn't have the stuff available for information. So it was totally winging it, you know, unless you happen to know somebody who was doing it. You basically were totally winging it and trying to figure it out on your own. So <clears throat> yeah, I've been doing it for a while. I've, I've tried some different things. I found some things that work, some things that don't work for me they may work differently for you because these are based on my own preferences and needs. I got a messed up back, for example. That in, in, in impacts a lot of what I do and impacts my decisions. Um, I'm a minimalist. That impacts things. I, I really am hardcore on open space and lack of clutter. So that impacts the way I do builds and the way I arrange things because I want visibility. I don't want to feel claustrophobic or closed in. That just doesn't work for me. But those are my things. So your things may be different. So <clears throat> one of the things I found with van setups though is that even car setups, but especially van trailer or whatever, it's one thing to have it all figured out on paper or in your mind how it's going to work. It's another to actually live with that build. And what often happens is you set something up and then you start living in it you realize it doesn't work quite the way you were thinking so I always encourage people whenever they I talk with them to if you're setting up a van for the first time or a trailer for the first time try and go as modular and as temporary as you can so go with what you think is gonna work but don't build anything permanent uh, until you're sure it's gonna work if you're using wood cabinets try and keep them modular so you can move them around otherwise use plastic bins or drawers use a cot use a temporary bed use something you can move things around to make sure the layout's going to work for you before you commit to an expensive and, and time consuming build to get that all done only to find out that hey i don't like this this doesn't work for me so uh you know i was in a car for a while when i started out i rearranged that several times i was in a converted cargo trailer and i remodeled that twice major remodels twice with a few other tweaks along the way uh, and then I've got um, you know this minivan I this I just completed my third rearrangement light build you know I, I'm not doing a hardcore build here because it's already got plastic walls and a headliner and all that jazz and and I'm not um, wanting to it's got a lot of miles on it so I don't want to tear it all apart and do a fancy build in it because it doesn't make sense to me. So I try and keep things modular so I can take it right in and out. Uh, you know, if the thing dies and I have to replace another vehicle, I can just take stuff out and put it in the new one uh, with a minimal amount of effort and fuss. So I just completed my third arrangement. Each one, I think, has addressed an issue that was a challenge. or has, Each one, I think, has addressed a challenge and some issues and made it a little better. Uh, but... Um, this one I think is the best of all. Uh, I am doing less cooking in the van now than I used to. Uh, part of that's the heat. With the summer, it's just ridiculous trying to cook in a minivan when it's 80, 90 degrees out. Um, so basically, if I'm in the city, uh, you know, I either cook at my son's house if I'm going to cook something or I don't cook. <laughs> I do non-cooked meals or or get something I don't have to, or you know, get something out, you know, uh, which do, isn't the greatest for the budget, but um, it's just not worth it trying to cook in the minivan in the summer uh, in Wyoming where it's 80, 90 degrees, 95 degrees every day. So, um, so I'm either doing that or if I'm out camping, I either do no cook meals or I set up an outdoor kitchen. Uh, let's do what I did uh, this morning. Actually, I made uh, you know fried eggs and toast and and coffee and uh, 
actually did a video earlier too that, that uh, you probably may have already seen about camp cooking and if you see my outdoor uh, setup in that video. Um, but I do one of the two things. As soon as we leave here, uh, we're going to be doing primarily uh, uh, boondocking again. You know, maybe the occasional Walmart or truck stop. Uh, but for the most part, it'll be back to boondocking. It won't be longer stays, uh, you know, doing stealth camping. So I'll be doing more outdoor cooking. And, uh, you know, I just, the thing I started when I was in the car is I care, make sure I carry enough uh, stuff that doesn't have to be cooked that if I get rained in or, or caught with wind and cannot cook outdoors that I still can get by. And, you know, when it gets to be uh, winter, I may start cooking in the van more again. I'll rig up a table for that. Um, but we'll see. It's, it's, that time's not there yet. But when it's cooler, it's not really a problem. But for right now, it is. So, so I'll give you a quick tour of the van. I mentioned the cooking thing. Say, I've, I've, when I remodeled it, I changed things around. I kept the kitchen cabinet, but I no longer have the cook surface in the van. So I'll give you a quick tour here and show you what I did. Okay, some of you may remember uh, from previous videos, uh, I've done a few different layouts. The all of them have had the, basically, have had, or at least the first two had the uh, bed on the side. Uh, sometimes I have storage here, sometimes I have storage in the back by moving things around. Um, but I generally feature the bed on that side because you only, the minivan, the, between the wheel wells is four feet, and it's like seven feet from the back of the seats to the back of the van. So you got limited options for how you want to lay a bed out. And if you're 5'11", like I am, you basically have to run the bed lengthwise. Um, I use it on that side because I use that door less. I use this door more, so it just works out more conveniently. If you remember, I started this build out, the third arrangement. I had started running cabinets down the far wall. Pulled out the bed that was in there, which had been built with scrap lumber, was starting to fall apart anyways, and started replaced with cabinets. I was going to do either a hammock or a cot. What I found is that when I put the cabinets in, they interfered with my ability to run a string of hammock, which I had not anticipated. And then the, uh, it was narrow enough. I wasn't going to be able to fit a cot, except for the cot took up everything. So it couldn't even walk into there. So it was really a pain in the neck. So, uh, what ended up happening, um, I had a, uh, a shout out to my friend Linda, who is a fellow van dweller. She's fairly new on the road. Came up to Wyoming to and did a meet up. And uh, this uh, cot was actually, she was using in her minivan at the time, uh, as well as these two drawers here, actually. But she decided to do some rearranging uh, and how things, try and do things that would work a little better for her. And she ended up passing on the cot. So I got that cot from her and it's working out really well for me. So thank you, Linda. That's been a wonderful addition to this setup. And when I did that, I had to pull out all the cabinets. Um, fortunately, because it's modular, everything, I built everything modular, I was able to reuse it. So the top sh part of my shelf here, the bottom part is my kitchen cabinet you've seen before. The top part is part of the new shelf I had built. Um, the other half did not get recycled, but this one did. Uh, so that's worked out really well. I have enough storage. There's only limited places you can go up in this van. You only have just so far because the roof curves in so steeply, or the walls curve in so steeply as it as it goes up towards the roof that it, you can only go just so high. Um, it tapers to the point it's not any good anymore. So basically I've got the cot along the side. It runs all the way up to the back of the driver's seat. Um, and underneath I have storage. Uh, these little drawer units have been really handy, help me organize and get rid of a duffel bag and into something that's more organized. I have all of my clothes stuffed in this gray bin here. Uh, I have some water next to it and more water behind it. I have six gallons I'm carrying right now. I'd like to carry a little more than that, but you know, it's a minivan. I can only do so much. <laughs> I used to carry like 12 in the trailer. Um, you know, the multi-purpose bucket that's good for all kinds of things. I have tools back in there in the back. I wish I didn't have to use the space to carry tools, but you know, stuff comes up, especially when you're driving an old van. Uh, I do have a, a little Ryobi uh, fan there. It runs on the standard uh, battery packs for the uh, Ryobi power tools. That's really nice on a warm evening for a while to cool down. And I am using a cooler right now. I've gone back and forth on that. I started with a real small one when I first got on the road. It was too small to be useful. Got rid of it, went without, had a, had the, had a uh, refrigerator in the trailer, and then went without again. And so I'm doing this for now because it's so hot that, I mean, everything just goes bad within a day. 
um, with the heat. So once it cools down, I may not continue to use it, uh, but for now, it's really handy both being able to have a cold drink and being able to uh, you know, keep some, certain things a little bit colder to make them last a few more days. Okay, in the back of the van here, uh, you can see the, the uh, cabinets. I've never really been able to open my back door very often because um, I'd always end up with stuff stuck along the back, tools and things, and every time I opened the, the back hatch, stuff would fall out. So I only opened it if I needed to. Um, so now with this buildup, I had to set it forward several inches in the back to make room uh, so I can access, if I ever have to change the tire, the spare tires has a little screw there that I've got to screw down to uh, lower it. And so I had to make sure I could access that. So I had to set that shelf forward a few inches. That gives you a little bit of room to store a few things there. But, you know, basically it's out of the way. I shoved my windscreen for cooking in on the side there. But I've got my uh, battery over here on the side. Um, and then the box next to it is just um, automotive stuff. Uh, you know, fluids and uh, spare tire compressor, that sort of stuff. And then I have some food in there. And that black box is my stove. My little butane stove. And this is mostly all, on top is all kitchen and uh you know food and kitchen utensils that sort of stuff um, extra treat here in this little bag this box has got plastic on it my friend our viewer mary jane brought us when we were here uh in, when we were last time we were in sundance she brought over some chocolate mint fresh out of her garden so i've been enjoying that but that's why that's in that plastic um all right, this is all my little uh toiletries type stuff uh, in this corner i have my inverter and uh, you know a, a USB port that I can charge stuff up with. Um, that's you know convenient to the bed. So basically that's it. Uh, it's pretty simple. You know um, the shelf is built. Um, it's actually a couple different shelves you know screwed together and built. Um, I just put lips on them to uh, you know keep boxes from sliding out. You could buy a shelf if you found something to fit your van just as easily. Um, the bed is a cot, the boxes are plastic, they slide under. So it's really quite simple. If this van dies and I buy something different, I can literally unload everything out of this van. You know, in a matter of minutes, the only thing that would take more than a few minutes would be unbolting the solar panel, and that's going to go too. Um, again, that would, uh, probably an hour I could strip this thing out overall. So you don't have to do anything complicated to have a comfortable living space. Now, if you've got the time and the skill and the money and you've got a vehicle that you think is worth investing in, sure, you can do a fancy build and maybe a little bit more comfortable, have a little more functionality, a little more uh, aesthetic, a little more aesthetically pleasing, but you don't have to do that to have a comfortable living space, mobile living space. And you can set up something modular get started to see what works for you, move it around a few times if necessary, and then build something more complicated when you're sure uh, you know how you want it set up, if you think the vehicle's worth putting it into. But you can get by nicely just with a very simple setup if you need to, or if you're not sure how you want to lay it out yet, or if you don't think your vehicle's up to put, worth putting a bunch of money into. So that's a quick tour of my van. It's basically a third major arrangement. Um, I also at one point added the kitchen counter that ran along the driver's, uh, the passenger side rather, along that wall back there. So that made a quite a difference, uh, improved the functionality, made it more cluttered. Um, but that was back in the spring when it was cool enough to cook in the van. Then it got hot and I couldn't cook in the van anyway. So, so you know, I, I've moved it around a few times. Um, but I hope this gives you some ideas if you're thinking about uh, getting into a, a minivan, especially. Um, they do present some challenges because of the size both the square footage i got about 28 square feet here uh and you know it's only i don't know if it's even four feet high it's, it's, it's fairly low so they do present some unique challenges there are some advantages i always say as a minivan can be a great option if you're a single person you're a minimalist um, and you don't mind living small uh, i know the few couples that do it I can't imagine it. I'm not sure I can imagine a couple in a full-size van, to be honest with you, so I definitely can't see it in a minivan. Um, you got to be a minimalist because you just cannot carry a lot of stuff. I've got too much stuff in here, but most of it is household stuff like cooking things and kitchen stuff and some tools. Uh, if I get rid of that stuff, I'd, I'd be very comfortable, but of course then I'd have to eat out or not eat non-cooked foods and 
would not be able to do some work on the van that I do now. But you know, and you have to not be able to mind living small because it really is a small space and windows can help with that psychologically, but it is a small space. Um, beyond that, you, they do have some other advantages like stealth is great, gas mileage can be good. You know, so those, are, those are upsides, uh, but you know, it's not for everybody. It might just drive you crazy. Uh, <laughs> But if you can tolerate it, if you can live with it and learn to fit into it, um, you know, they do offer some good advantages. Like I say, the stealth is great on, a, on minivans. Um, every time I go to Walmart, there's, there's two or three or four blue minivans that are, you know, substantially similar. So you, don't, you just fit right in, and, and nobody expects you to be living in a van. So that's handy. Uh, the gas mileage, I can get 25 to 28 out of this thing consistently on open roads, so that beats the heck out of a cargo van or a conversion van, so definitely any RV. So if you can put up with the downsides, you know, there are some advantages to it. Um, but this is how I've got my build set up right now. This is my favorite so far. This is working really well for me. Um, so I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do and what might work for you. Uh, meanwhile, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing if you want to see all of my van life and travel videos. All right, thank you. See you in the next video.